Good evening, everybody. It's a great joy and honor to stand before so many movers and seekers of God's mission. I would like to thank God. I would like to thank Steve Yom for coming to Nepal to visit me in my office. And when he came and he offered me this opportunity to share how the Lord is moving in country of Nepal, doing, bringing so many miracles and wonder and growth in the Church of Life of Nepal. So I thank you very much. I have a few presentation. Before that, I would like to share a small a documentary which I made a few years back. It will help you to understand and visualize how the Lord is working in country of Nepal. Thank you very much. Enjoy the video. Nepal is a beautiful country with diverse landscapes, and unique ethnic groups. It is landlocked by two giant countries to the north, China and India in the east, west and the south. It is a Himalayan country and is home to the tallest mountain in the world, the Mount Everest. The predominant religion is Hinduism and the country was the only Hindu kingdom in the world until 2008, when it became a secular state. It is believed that there are more temples than there are houses, and the number of Hindu gods outnumbers the population. According to the Nepal government census of 2001, 80.6% of the population are Hindu, 10.7% are Buddhist, 4.2% are Muslim, 3.4% are Kirat and 0.41% are Christian with roughly 0.6% not belonging to a particular religious tradition. However, according to Christian leaders and organizations, they have estimated that there are about 700,000 Christians, which would make them about 2% of the population. The government recognizes over 40 different ethnic groups and eight major religions. Of them, some peoples still live in caves, in the jungle, or even in slums. Until 1950, Nepal was completely isolated from the world outside its borders. The introduction of democracy in 1950 paved the way for the entry of Christians and the gospel from India. In 1952, the first church was established in the Ramga church in Pokhara. By 1956 and 1957, other churches like Putali Sadak church, Nepal Isai Mandali, Gyaneshwar church, and the Emmanuel church in Bhaktapur were established. In the early years of the church, Christianity was almost considered a state enemy religion. Persecution became a part of life for the Christians. That resulted in a phenomenal church growth all over the country. In those early days, pastors, evangelists and converts were put in prison and even some put to death. That the church in Nepal is growing rapidly despite the severe persecution in the beginning and at present as well. Nepal is in the world renowned as the country with the fastest growing church. However, it is still lacking training in the areas of developing leaders and missionaries for cross-cultural mission and planning and working strategic direction as a united body of Christ. After numerous meetings and prayers, the Missions Commission of Nepal Can we MCN, stop it? was established on June 22nd. 
And Nepal was closed until 1950. Before 1950, there was no Christian. Christians were not allowed to come in. The country was completely closed for foreigners. No Christian could stay and live. No foreigners could come to Nepal and do development work or missionary work. The people, the missionary group were praying in Indian border and they were praying and asking God, God, open the door for Nepal. And a politi political uh, change took place in 1950. And first missionary group that came from UK, led by two daily ladies, came to Nepal, start a medical mission. Uh, while I'm talking, can you uh, put the overhead projector? And they started a, started a miss, medical mission in Pokhara. And first church was established in 1952. Of course, it was a Hindu country, still a Hindu country. Conversion is prohibited. It's a, a Hindu country. 85% of the people are Hindu. As the video says, there are more gods than the people of Nepal. We have around 30 million people, and God is 30, gods are 33 millions, over 33 millions. So this is how the country uh, is in a dark place. The Satan, the evil is controlling the country. But God is doing so much miracles and wonders. And now we have more than 3% Christians. Amen? Can you believe the country uh, which has zero uh, Christian uh, after, uh, before 1950, and now we have almost 3% of Christians. So, uh, can we move? And many of us, uh, we, uh, we don't have an uh, understanding where the Nepal is. Usually, sometimes uh, people misunderstand it's a part of India or uh, it's a part of Africa. Uh, the Nepal is between two uh, giant countries of Asia, between China and India. It's a landlocked country, and sometimes we feel so much oppressed. You know, when two bulls fight, the grass suffers. <laughs> so we feel sometimes suffocated because it's a tiny sandwiched uh, between two a giant country. And we, we find it difficult to survive. But Lord is, you know, uh, merciful. He's been uh, helping and blessing us, okay? So Nepal is between China and India. Okay, go ahead. This is Nepal. Okay, this is a picture. Now it's around 30 million uh, people are in Nepal. Even though it's so, uh, uh, we have, let's say, uh, Hindu, 81%. Uh, and this is the census uh, taken in 2001. But uh, as of now, we have, uh, Christians have uh, grown. What happens, I am a Hindu convert. When the census taker go to the villages, and they don't go to home to home to take the census. So when they ask my name, uh, what's your name? And I said, Ram Prasad Shrestha. And without further inquiry, they tick my religion as a Hindu because my title, my name is Hindu. So they don't ask, you know, a religion. That's why the government census is very, very low. Now, uh, to uh, 1.41 percentage, but Christian, uh, leaders say we are more than three percentage. Okay, go ahead. Can we move? Okay, penetration of gospel, as I mentioned, uh, it was closed until 1950, and first church was established in 1952 in Pokhara, and the second church was established in 
in, in Kathmandu, which was 1953. Uh, some of the missionaries from South India came and they helped start uh, the church. Third, third church was established in 1955, uh, uh, which was established uh, missionary from uh, Darjeeling and Kalimpong, North India. Preaching and conversion was and is still illegal if found doing so, three to six years of prison uh, sentences. Like if I am found preaching gospel, then government can put me in prison. But we are not afraid of preaching gospel because we go on the street, we share gospel. Uh, until 1990, there were more than 30 Christians in prison. And 200 Christians, pastors and leaders, were persecuted. They were, uh, you know, they had, they had a, uh, a case in the court. But the political system in 1990 uh, changed. And after that, we got a democratic system. And uh, some of the Christians who were put in prison were pardoned. Okay, let's move. Go ahead. Christianity in Nepal. Uh, as of 2008, Nepal used to be a Hindu country, only one Hindu country in the world. But after 2008, uh, political, because of the political changes, uh, now Nepal has become a secular country. So thank you very much for prayer. People around the world have prayed uh, for the freedom in Nepal. But now, recently, the government has drafted new constitution saying that Nepal is going to be a secular country. But there are so many political uh, groups uh, being a dominant Hindu country. Uh, people are very much upset, and especially India, because now the present president uh, who is in India is you know, uh, Hindu. Uh, uh, Hindu, they have come from Hindu political party, and now India is quite upset. So now India is also uh, forcing Nepal uh, that Nepal must be a Hindu country. So we are going through a lot of trouble now. Uh, now the constitution is going to be drafted again, saying that uh, uh, Christianity is kind of crime and it's a punishable. So they are still uh, putting prison uh, Christian into prisons. Uh, Christianity was considered as a state enemy. Conversion is pro prohibited. State think that Christianity is important white man's religion. Present government has granted religious freedom of worship. However, conversion is still uh, prohibited. Go ahead. Before 1990, about 33 Christians were serving their sentences in prison for converting to Christianity and getting involved in evangelism. About 200 Christians were prosecuted in the court. Numerous pastors and leaders were physically tortured, evicted from their village with family. Churches were burned and Bible were destroyed. Because I come from a Hindu family and I was also persecuted by the family. I did not get any inheritance from my father. I was kicked out from the family and they considered me as untouchable uh, people, untouchable uh, 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 people. So they denounced me, they kicked out from my village. And this is a, a part of our Christian life because every uh, Nepali who becomes Christian have to go through certain persecution because we feel that persecution is part of our inheritance of faith. Okay, go ahead. You see how this Christianity have grown? This is the figure un until 2007. So it's like rocket, you know, going up. So this is how Christianity is growing in Nepal. It's a fastest growing, uh, I would say one of the fastest growing uh, church in the world, okay? Let's go ahead. My time is off now. Let's go. <laughs> so this is how Christianity has grown. Okay, let's go. Move. Faster, okay, data, Nepal is the fastest growing uh, country, Christian population is around 3%, okay, rapid growth of denomination, and lot of things are happening, there are a lot of, in Kathmandu alone, we have around 45 Bible colleges and training center. 
Kathmandu alone. And there are around six Bible colleges which are affiliated with ATA. And uh, I would like to uh, mention here, we have around uh, five Bible colleges established by Korean people. So Korean people have also done a great work. So thank you very much for Korean churches, okay? And go ahead. <laughs> indigenous movement, a Bible college, and there were several, several indigenous movements that have taken place, and they are, you know, uh, bringing growth in Christianity. Okay, Bible college, go ahead. Self-propagation, self-government, self-supporting, okay? Churches are very much self-supporting, uh, self-governed, and self-propagation. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I don't have time, but I would like to take one minute. Global impact. God has brought so many ups and downs in the country of Nepal. Political changes, uh, persecution, and also, you know, we had a terrorist group. And uh, because of that, so many people fled the country. They went to different parts of the world, like Malaysia, Hong Kong, UK, Dubai, or I just like to uh, give you an example. In Malaysia, we have a Nepali people working over 500,000 Nepali workers. And almost 100 churches, Nepali churches have been established in the country of Malaysia. So Nepali uh, people are converted, being converted in the Malaysia. So I would like to thank Malaysian churches who have contributed their resources, people in evangelizing and converting them to Christianity. And after they finish their term, they work around three to five years, and when they become Christian, they go back, and they uh, are trained back in the country, and they become a pastor, they become a leader. So this is how, this is only one example of country of Malaysia, but there are so many countries People are going out and they are being converted. They are coming back and they are doing evangelistic work. So please pray for Nepal. And I don't have much time, so I'm, I'm asked to stop now. So thank you very much for this opportunity, and God bless you.